Hey there, guys, Dylan here for ProductionCrate.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your voiceover tracks stand out from the crowd, as well as how to mix all your audio together in a way that's clear, coherent, and professional. Well, that was awful. Let's try and fix it. Whether you're a filmmaker, vlogger, podcaster, gamer, or video essayist, that word didn't get the red line. That's the real word. It's important to know how to mix multiple pieces of audio into a complete whole. Though it's super cool that we can easily have a voiceover, sound effects, and music in our very own YouTube video or piece of new media, a lot of content unfortunately neglects to make sure that the most important elements aren't overtaken by the other noises. So let's talk vocals first. Now users of Adobe products have been enjoying some pretty major upgrades in Premiere's arsenal of audio tools. Features that were once exclusive to Adobe Audition have migrated straight into their dedicated video editor, cutting out the need to send your sound back and forth between programs for cleanup and enhancement. Chief among these additions is Dynamics Processing, a great tool for shaping your audio files for specific situations. With presets for both vocals and instruments, you can quickly boost what needs boosting for voiceovers or music production, or go deeper by mapping out your own custom variations, point by point. Of course, I'm aware that equipment and recording space will vary from person to person, so please note that settings that work for some people won't necessarily work for others. I implore you all to play with these settings until you find something that complements what you're working with and what you're trying to do. Hey there, guys, Dylan here for ProductionCrate.com. Up next, we got the Vocal Enhancer. I've been using this one for years, and it does exactly what you'd expect, honing in on the speechier frequencies and boosting them to the forefront. There's three versions for male, female, and musical voices, which aren't necessarily limited to the names that they're given. Experiment and see what matches your particular voice tone or the character of your recording overall. Hey there, guys, Dylan here for ProductionCrate.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your voiceover tracks stand out from the crowd. Adaptive noise reduction is a solid way to cut down on artifacts that made their way into your track. By George. I really screwed this up, didn't I? By George. I really screwed this up, didn't I? Of course, if there's a lot of room tone or external noise, it can only help so much. So in these cases, I'll actually bounce the track into Adobe Audition, which has an amazing sound remover. By highlighting a few seconds of uninterrupted environmental sound, you can essentially tell the software what you'd like to get rid of in your track. And once you set the intensity in which you'd like it to do this, it goes to town on the whole thing. Like all things worth doing, you'll have to play with the intricacies a few times, but once you've figured out a good balance, it really pays off in the end. By George. I really screwed this up, didn't I? By George. I really screwed this up, didn't I? Lastly, we have the hard limiter. This leads me to a more complicated matter of broadcast and audio leveling standards for videos. With a basic Google search, you'll see that there is actually a lot of discussion of what works for sound in web media, with viewpoints varying in different jobs and industrial experiences. Kind of like doctors. You know, those guys may have degrees earned through years of training and research, but ultimately they don't really agree on anything. So I just avoid them all together, and frankly, I feel great. I have absolutely no- <laughs> No- <laughs> Sorry. What is generally agreed upon is that traditional TV audio peaks are substantially below what's commonly practiced for online content. Roughly 12 decibels below the clipping point. Meanwhile, a lot of the stuff you see on YouTube, whether it's comedy sketches, vlogs, or music videos, will be normalized anywhere between 9 and 0.01 decibels below. Anyway, my point is you'll find lots of literature on what to aim for with each individual layer of audio, so take whatever I suggest here with a grain of salt. You might find settings that work a little better for what you're trying to do, and that's perfectly fine. So in cases like this, I like to apply the 6 below limiter. It boosts the audio to a good deal without the risk of getting too loud for most listeners. If you adjust the gain for your audio, there's actually some boxes that give you the option of normalizing your levels to a particular peak of decibels. The hard limiter essentially does a similar thing, but it processes the crap out of your audio and really fills out things like vocals. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your voiceover track stand out from the crowd. So with all that, we have a handful of ways to improve the centerpiece of our mix that can be used in any combination of one another, depending on your tastes. And with the addition of sound effects, a couple of tweaks to the volume will do the trick once they're in your timeline, even while your voice track is rolling. But then there's music, which can come in all sorts of shapes and styles. If it's too bassy, you can slap on a high-pass filter and crank the intensity until you find a good enough threshold for lower frequencies. And the same can be said for a brighter track with stronger mids and highs. If there's only a couple times that you'd like the volume of the music to change, you can get away with just using the pen tool to bump or lower the levels in relation to your voice. But if you're working on something that's more than a few minutes and is divided into sections marked by an absence of a vocal track, 
Yeah, that mess is gonna get real laborious real fast. Luckily, Adobe has given us salvation in the form of a ducker. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Allow me to unveil something that could very well render the rest of this tutorial completely pointless to some of you. Adobe's Essential Sound Panel. This nifty feature is packed with super quick pre-made effects racks that tailor your sounds based on the category of dialogue, sound effects, music, and ambience. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't just jump straight into this interface if I was going to talk about sound and balancing and all that good stuff. Well, uh, just look at it. What even is this? What does this do? Amplify? The heck is that? Volume? Like this volume? Why not just move this volume? Podcast, male, female, room type? How, how do you know what my room sounds like? What do you know that I don't? Jokes aside, all of this is super usable, and having played with it a handful of times, I totally get the appeal of it. I'm just a little old school in that I prefer knowing what's altering my sound, and laying down all of this tweaking brick by brick. One preset from this, and I'm all like, whoa! What did I do? That all said, the auto-ducking feature is something that I can totally get into. You just mark the stuff in your timeline accordingly. My voice track's here, and my music is underneath. Then, using these variables, you can map out a precise system for how you want the volumes to interact with each other, down to the intensity of the gain drop to the speed at which you want to do it. Once you have that hammered down, just calculate the keyframes, wait a bit, and voila. Minutes and minutes of work done for you, like magic. Hey there, guys, Dylan here for ProductionCrate.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your voiceover track stand out from the crowd, as well as how to mix all your audio together in a way that's clear, coherent, and professional. Hope you guys found this one useful. It was a little longer than what I've been doing and can hopefully inspire discussion on how to best utilize these programs for the stuff that we create. If you've got your own way of doing things, please feel free to share it down below, as well as any good articles on production that you think the community would benefit from reading. So until next time, have a good one, and remember to make it awesome. Peace.